Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to aim for orbit with the Buster series of rockets. I have unlocked early avionics so I time warped to complete that technology, but we still don't have basic orbital rocketry. Our base engine is the RD-103, which is basically a variant on the same engine used in the V-2 and similar to the engine used on the Redstone rocket, which uh, launched Alan Shepard on his suborbital flight with Mercury. And so now we have the Explorer core, and so that will give us SAS, which I felt I needed, stability assistance. Uh, we also have the guidance unit uh, under this stage, and so up to this stage we'll have guidance, but past that we will not. So that is a uh, downside. But so let me uh, replace this sounding rocket telemetry unit, which is actually heavier, with this Explorer core. And the Explorer core is more expensive, but, you know, it's, it's worth it. And it's also got experiments built in, which is handy. So it's actually got the temperature, radiation data, uh, telemetry, impact data. So we can remove some of the instruments that we have on the base of this, right? Because we had the thermometer and barometer here. And we can use the core instead of the nose cone. So that's handy too. Now obviously it should be shielded in a shroud or something. Uh, I don't know what its temperature tolerance actually seems okay for the way up. Uh, if it blows up obviously we'll put a we'll put a fairing around it but for now that's just an, another expense and extra mass so why? Why would we do such a thing? Actually, with the lighter Explorer core, this definitely has enough delta-v for orbit. So that's nice. Okay, well, let's call this Buster 1. And uh, I don't know if I need fins or not. This has 2 degrees of gimbling. Maybe fins would be helpful. But again, unless we definitely need it, it's just another expense. So we will save this as Buster 1 and build one. And we will launch it. I do plan to use the boomers uh, still. I want to see how... The, those perform, especially the one with maxed out utilization. I know uh, people said, okay, well that's cheating with the maxed out utilization. Maybe this one we don't need it. Actually, you know here, I didn't intend to have it. That was just for the for the test of the of the boomer. I didn't want max utilization here. Uh, I think 90 is fine. And uh, on the max utilization idea, I do have to point out that the Atlas rocket originally uh, really was paper thin. Uh, it, it really did have pretty close to max utilization. In fact, when they tried to put the mercury capsule on top of it initially, it crumpled because, because the, the structure of it was so light. And that's why they got away with having the Atlas rocket be a one and a half stage rocket, right? Uh, it only had one and a half stages. It dumped some engines, uh, you know, two booster engines partway through flight. And the reason they were able to is this increasing at all? Ah, uh, this isn't increasing. Hmm. Hold on, let me uh, save and gen then jump back in. But uh, anyway, uh, this rocket was not meant to push those boundaries. I'll uh, stick it to 90%. I think that'll be fine for upper stages. Okay, hopefully it's working now. Let's see. Yeah, now it's working. All right, uh, man, five seconds for the XASRs. Uh, we still have plenty of delta V. You can see uh, one of the main points uh, uh, of actually turning up the utilization to 100% on the Boomer rocket was to show that it doesn't have that much uh, benefit on the delta V. And here again, uh, I've turned the utiliz utilization down from 100 to 90, and uh, here our our delta V has not really appreciably changed much. So yeah, it's not a big deal uh, in this case. Uh, when when using uh, well much larger stages and different types of tanks instead of fuselage, then it might. Okay, so let us build this. It's gonna take a whopping 56 days to build it, though. That's that's quite a long time. Let me take a look at the contracts. Sounding rocket high, sounding rocket medium, I think we can just do with this. We just need to get to 190 kilometers. I think that's going to be done. 
these are crude things. Um, about 5,900 will eventually be done, but I don't think we're aiming for it this time. Oh, we've got two being built. Shoot. Um, this one has 100% utilization. Well, since I demonstrated that the Delta V thing is not a big deal, uh, we'll, we'll s keep this in reserve. So this, this should be the one that had 100% utilization on the top stages. We'll just reserve that. We can, uh, we can use it for the edits once we figure out what's wrong with this, this one. Alright, once again our electric charge is diminishing quite quickly. That's gonna have to be a problem we solve if we really want to get a lot of science out of an orbital flight. Uh, we'll have to put more electric charge. Alright, throttle is up. SAS is on. Alright, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Up we go. Nice TWR. Not any clouds around. I hope there are clouds somewhere. But it's a very clear day at the Cape. Okay, let me try and start turning it. Guidance is good. Ooh, it is wiggly still though. I think I need fins just to keep it close to prograde kind of thing. Ah! Ah! Yeah, I don't know. For, for a two degree gimbal, that was pretty bad. <laughs> where, where is the rest of it anyway? Yeah, I'll put fins. <laughs> okay, many pieces have been produced by the breakup of this rocket. Yeah, I mean, obviously aerodynamic stresses. Okay. Okay, so I don't know how far is with tweak scaling the fins, so I would like large fins that don't need to be tweak scaled. Um, I really don't need to have them moving surfaces because actually they're just supposed to hold us. So, I mean, I really want the basic fins, but then they're too small. I guess I'll risk... Well, I can't tweak scale them anyway. There's no tweak scale module on it. Okay. Maybe a delta wing? How about wing strakes instead? I love wing strakes. Yeah, I mean, that's a different look for a rocket. You don't normally see it looking like that. There might be a good reason, but I can't think of one. Um, yeah. Yeah, makes it look like a superhero rocket or something like that. I don't know why. Um, well, that should help with uh, keeping us to prograde, all right. Oh, it only takes a day to make that fix. Oh, let's change the tank utilization again. Okay, here we are again. KGR is doing his thing. SAS on, throttle up. And I'll try to be a little bit more gentle about turning this time. Well, I mean, just... Uh, I haven't got the dev build of uh, MechJeb that's supposedly a little bit better on controlling the craft. I'll have to try and get that. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Six electric charge per second, quite a draw. From these guidance units, presumably. Still unusually wiggly, I have to say. Gotta try not to maneuver as we're going transonic. No, not too much anyway. We're pretty steep right now. I'm not gonna be particularly bothered if I'm in a high orbit. That would suit me fine, actually. Separation. RCS on. Ignition. Ah. Uh, why do we not have ignition? Feed pressure too low. Lack of pressure. You mean the fuselage tanks don't have the right pressure? Shoot. Wrong tanks, huh? Well, well, I guess uh, we have to get to this point to find that out. Uh, Alright. Uh, on the bright side, the nitrous oxide seems to be quite enough. If I tell Smart ASS to go to prograde, can it do that?
we can still attempt to fulfill the contract, right? Uh, we have a contract for, uh, oh, that's, that's five, well, that's crude. Okay, uh, where's the contract one? 190 kilometers. So yeah, I think we can get to 190 kilometers at this rate. What is our apoapsis? 201, just enough. There might be some experiment that we haven't done on this thing. Um, log radiation data. Yeah, radiation data above Earth's water, so we can do it over other biomes. Record impact data. Yep, yeah, that's new. Uh, I think pressure uh, temperature is done. Actually, it doesn't have pressure. Analyze telemetry. That's done. Okay, so we fulfilled the contract. Yes, we did. So, I mean, uh, the contract definitely paid for the rocket. This is going to be going you know, smack into ground quite... Oh, no, it's got to flip around because I said orbit prograde instead of uh, surface. Well, that's a quicker disintegration. That uh, Explorer probe core, very resilient. I don't think I need to put a fairing around it. So, uh, tanks. Oh, how did it get, I thought... Wait. This one ended up being structural. I didn't want... Stru uh, then was it, weren't they both fuselage before? I must have misclicked something. Yeah, I, I had them both on fuselage, but... Uh, but I must have misclicked it and it turned it into structural. That was the problem. So I wasn't completely out of my mind. Okay. Alright, there we go. That should be okay. But you know how this works. So, uh, yep. Buster, Buster 1 again. <laughs> let's try it. Build. And let's go. Alright, here we go again. Throttle is up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. This time I really need to start turning earlier. But I still need to be cautious as well. Alright, looking good. Max Q will be around here. I know I can look under far to see the dynamic pressure, you don't have to tell me. I, in fact, uh, even MechJab probably has a dynamic pressure readout. Uh, we've got some wigglies, but I think the wing strikes are doing their thing. Okay, set, RCS, ignition, and we have engines, and we aren't under control. No, no, what? Okay, I take it back. Uh, the RCS might not be good enough. Let's. I'm gonna let Smarty SS try and get us to prograde. I don't know if it can. Hmm. Okay. Is it firing at all? They don't appear to be firing, actually. Cycling RCS. Oh! Why. Ugh. I don't have any nitrous oxide. When I uh, changed the type of the fuel tank, I forgot to put nitrous oxide in. That's why. Okay, well, yeah, this is obviously not going to work. I'll just, uh, alright, back to Space Center. Yeah, we need to put nitrous oxide in. <laughs> Otherwise, of course, the RCS is not going to work. Okay, and while our new buster gets finished, we will actually unlock basic orbital rocketry, but we don't need it yet. That is more advanced stuff for larger satellites. And actually with the Boomer, we could actually put the, the Explorer core on and it would probably be able to do even better than it has been. It might be able to get into orbit with the lighter core. Also, we can try Vanguard. I mean, you know, use the Vanguard uh, sort of system. I'll use Air B sustainers instead of the SRBs myself. And uh, we can probably use that much more lightweight and hopefully cheaper engine to get a satellite into orbit. But we'll try this first. Alright, let's hope it works this time. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. We've got nitrous oxide this time, yay. 
start turning. I don't know why SAS gets grayed out like that. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I feel like that's something bad, right? I mean, I just do. Huh, I wonder how I'm rolling it. Doesn't seem like I should be able to, unless the this engine has some sort of verniers. But yeah, I can definitely roll it. The wing strakes don't provide any control, so... Okay, set. RCS on. Ignition. Okay, we have ignition and RCS. Obviously not the most efficient launch I could have ever done. Let's take a look at our Delta V remaining. I think we have enough as long as we sort of just keep pointing in this direction. But the last stage is gonna have some acceleration. Okay, it's burning. Uh, I might want to spin stabilize this fella. Yeah, I, I didn't think it would be necessary, but spin stabilization. I could put a guidance unit on it too. I think it's gonna. F I, I sh. I should have really uh, waited a little bit longer and had the RCS really keep it in line. It ended up deviating to one side, and I think that might be bad for the whole orbital thing. Yeah. Especially since we're going backwards now. Moving the Gantz unit up and having RCS on here would definitely make things very predictable. Spin stabilization might be enough though. Actually, you know what? We now have this guidance unit that allows control of 45 tons. And so we can dump, we had two guidance units here. We had one here and one here on the second stage. We could get rid of both of those and replace it with just this one. And as a result, we should have uh, control for the whole vessel, but also maybe we can move it to the upper stage and I can see what kind of delta V we'll get from that. We, it might not be good enough, but let me uh, make that arrangement and we'll call that Buster 2. Well, it looks like having active control all the way through is not an option. Uh, putting the core, well the guidance unit, all the way up here, even though it's lighter than the other two were before, uh, leaves us only with 7,461 meters per second. We really need this top stage as light as possible. So this Buster 2 is a bust, and instead we'll replace the cores on, oh, yeah, we'll uh, replace it on the second stage, and we'll have spin stabilization in this upper stage, and we'll see how that works out. So let me arrange for that, and we'll go with that as Buster 2. Okay, here we are. Let's go for it again. Everything looks all right. Actually, this uh, new probe core, the electric charge isn't diminishing like it was before. You know, it's actually quite stable right now. Interesting. It had really bad power draw before. I guess that was just the other... I, I don't mean probe core, I mean guidance unit. Uh, the other guidance unit was really bad about that. This one seems fine. Okay. Well, ignition. And launch. Let's hope I've got everything right. So uh, I've got two little separation motors on the third stage that will spin it up. But we should probably use the nitrous oxide RCS in order to m you know, sort of keep us stable before going with the third stage. We were a little bit too hasty. But what the heck has gone? Oh. Ah, test flight has given us a performance loss on our first stage. Well, that's just dandy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, sometimes test flight is going to make itself known, apparently. Anyway, uh, alright, well, we are not going as fast as I thought we would. I don't know how much Delta V we've lost as a result of this. Uh, 
Uh, I don't think we gotta make it to orbit. We'll find out. Uh, we gotta have separation while we are hitting max Q. I'll try and keep it at the center of the prograde vector here. Ah. Uh, fudge. Yeah. Uh. The probe core. Yeah, that was just bad. Let's try that again. Hopefully this time test flight will not provide us for performance loss on that engine. Okay, here we go again. Electric charge looks fine. Throttle up. SAS on. Okay, quite a shadow there. Let's take it from this view. Hopefully the RD-103 will work this time. Ignition. And launch. Uh, oh, why are we tilting? Whoa. Huh. SAS was not SASing? Strange. I had my hand off of the control stick because I was just trying to go straight up at that point. But looks like that wasn't such a good idea. There seems to be a, a weird tendency to the rocket sometimes. Okay, getting ready for first stage out. I see us on, stage out. Ignition. Alright. Our engines seem to be fine here. Maybe. Can't quite see the flame. Oh no, wait! Ah! One of the engines went out. <sighs> now test flight decides to do things. Engine shut down. Well, there's not much we can do here. I can't, uh,. If I action grouped all the engines, then maybe I could have individually shut down the the opposite one, but I can't reach it right now. Well, now two of them are out. Uh, looks like they are opposite pairs. Uh, but, <laughs> well, okay, it doesn't make it this any more stable. It just goes to another axis where it's instable. Okay. So, welcome to test flight. <laughs> I should have picked up an altitude record thing. We'll have to go for that, I think. Three engines out, four engines out. I think, uh, I don't know, it's just engine shutdown. It's not saying, it's not saying anything about... about fuel feed problems. This time it just decided that the engines had to go. I don't know why. I don't know, we got a bad batch of engines. Strange. Uh, I'm uh, waiting until the nitrous oxide can get us prograde. I think we may be ca uh, carrying too much nitrous oxide here. Considering stopping the spinning still hasn't depleted half of it. Okay, let's try it. Set. Okay, that's ignited. We are off. Oh, looks good. The spin stabilization looks good. Hasn't, uh sent vapor into the feed lines or anything, you know. Could have been too much spin, in which case we would have fuel feed problems. Or too little spin, and then we would be in unstable, so, you know. Uh, are we over a different biome? Not really. It's still water. I don't think we gotta set any altitude records. Also, we should test how the g-forces work with this thing really high g-forces. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, did we get anything? Not really. Okay. 
Could we eventually hit another landmass and thereby do other science? Nope, it's gonna end up in the middle of the Atlantic. Alright, back to Space Center and we'll try again and hope test flight doesn't hurt us. So on the previous launches, before the past two, the rocket had obvious flaws and test flight didn't touch them at all. But then on the past two, test flight has decided to do its magic on them. And do you get the feeling that test flight might know something about this rocket, might know that it actually would work if not for an engine failure? I don't know, let's find out. All right, ignition. And launch. Well, this time I'm hands off and it doesn't seem to be deviating much. I don't know what happened last time with the deviation. Okay, starting turn. Okay, we are through max Q and uh, proceeding. All right. Trajectory is pretty okay. Not a not as bad as some of the other ones I've had with this rocket before. Okay, set. Ignition. Okay, we have ignition of all seven engines. Gonna try and use the RCS to bring this down now. Oh! Shoot. Well, lost an engine again. Yeah, well, obviously that's not gonna work either. At least the other engines were fine. It was just one out of the seven. I suppose we could do without seven. I don't think we need... No, then again, uh, given the burn time limitations, maybe we do. Yeah, to get the Delta V we need. Given the limited burn time. So let's try and go for an altitude record. And so I'll, I guess I'll point it straight up instead of prograde. So smart ASS just go off. We will uh, try and get it straight up. Okay, that's pretty good. Right. Separation. Ignition. Let's see how high it can go. Hopefully we'll get a new record. Okay, here's the high G-forces. Alright, and how high did we get? Uh, only 1,858 kilometers. It's not that high. Stages were destroyed. Yeah, no record for this one. Well, I've reconsidered and I decided to just have five of the XASRs on the second stage. And so it's now a smaller second stage all overall. And it has less nitrous oxide as well. So hopefully having just five will help. It cuts out about 200 to 300 meters per second of delta V. Most of delta V, as you can see, is provided by the last stage anyway. And so far that seems pretty stable. We'll see how this works out. Possibly uh, launching with 7 this next time would work out, but uh, let's cut the odds of failure down a bit and we'll see if this works. Alright, so Buster 3. Well, what can I say? The element of uncertainty sure is exciting, isn't it? Here we go. Ignition. And launch. Again, I'm hands-free right now. Okay, starting the turn. Okay, all is well so far. I think the trajectory is mildly better than last time. Okay, here we go. Getting ready for a separation. RCS on, set. Ignition. Five engines ignited. We seem to have a minor rotation. That's 
probably not a problem. Alright, looking good. Incidentally, the RCS units do not provide any way of cancelling out the roll. They're just for pitch and yaw. Trying to get flat on the horizon here. Alright, we'll leave it there. Okay, looks stable. Separation. Ignition. And off we go. Alright, this might be the one. Let's find out. Depends if we make a good periapsis. Our trajectory might not have been the best thing in the world. Let's get orbital info. I mean, our apoapsis is going way out. Uh, it's gotta be close. Ah, no good periapsis. Really high apoapsis. Not quite orbit yet, but uh, yeah, there's there's hope here. We'll have to flatten out to even quicker than we did this time. So yeah, but we should get some new data. Let's see. Oh, I need to put pers put persistent rotation in here. Could have delayed a little bit, uh, maybe even coast to apoapsis before lighting this stage. That's quite possible. I'll have to, uh, I'll think I'll do that next time. Next time I'll coast to apoapsis and then light this stage only close to it. Uh, analyze telemetry. Grasslands, excellent. Okay, record impact data. No, that's just near Earth. Temperature, grasslands, transmit. Radiation data, transmit. Okay, uh, definitely over grasslands. Can we? Nah, it doesn't look like we're gonna go over to Sahara or anything. Tropics, okay. Well, there are lights down below. Where are we now? Desert, okay, good. Okay, still desert. Alright, I think I'll leave it be. I don't want to watch it explode. Okay, well, cross your fingers. I think this will be the last launch of this episode. After this, I think I will have to reconsider things. I mean, maybe it'll just be a trajectory thing, but... Yeah, a uh, good time for reflection. I have a lot of new engines, thanks to unlocking basic orbital rocketry. And I've got a lot more science. I really should get some science cooking. I've been negligent about queuing up more science. So I'll probably wrap up the episode with uh, going to the tech tree and unlocking something new. Though, of course, that'll take some time. Here we go. Ignition. And launch. Okay, this should be better. Still not perfect, but better. Okay, RCS on. Separation. Come on. Yeah. Ah! It crashed! The game crashed. Unbelievable. Okay, we'll try one more time. I don't even know the state of this. Uh, after the crash, we'll find out. Okay, so the game crashed, and I'm back in the game, and it looks like the Buster 3 is standing by ready for launch, so let's go to it. Well, I've lost count on what launch this is of this Buster rocket, but hopefully this one will be the charm. Alright, SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. and launch okay let's hold it there RCS is on separation ignition okay five engines are on Okay, we are flat, we've got a bit of a roll. Uh, 
Okay, so let's wait a bit until Apoapsis, and then we can do the rest of the burn. Okay, maybe around here will be fine. RC RCS on. Point down. Gotta watch out for not losing connection, but it didn't seem like we lost connection at any point during the previous one. Okay. Don't really want to be pitched down at all. That should be fine right there. Alright, separation. And ignition. And that didn't work. Uh, ignition's remaining one. Hold on. Shoot. It's now unstable. <sighs> one more time. <laughs> one more time. Uh, Alright. But this time, while the rocket is building, I'm going to unlock some technology. So, how about... Basic avionics? We got early avionics. We need basic avionics. Okay, uh, early construction yields to basic construction. Don't know if I need anything there particularly. SRBs here. Mature orbital rocketry requires basic construction, so I guess we'll have to go this way. Let's research that. Research that so that those can unlock. Uh, we have 20 science. There's a bunch of heat shields here. Uh, where are the solar panels? That's a solar panel. I'll go for the solar panel first. That seems reasonable. And the one kilonewton thruster. Yes, must have that. So that one I'll get. Okay, uh, this one requires 20 science. Planes are a different animal altogether. Okay, so we've got plenty of science cooking now. Let's take a look at the upgrade points. Um, yeah, we need to speed up our rocket building ability, uh, as well as our R&D. I will even put some funds in to get to 0.75 for now. Okay, let us build another Buster 3. Alright, throttle up, SAS is on, orbit info's out, that's probably going to be helpful anyway. So, ignition. And launch. Okay, looking good so far. Alright, very nice. Marginally better than before even, but let's go straight prograde. RCS on. Set. Ignition. Looks like we have four engines. Still a bit of a roll. And I'm trying to flatten out here. I'm actually going to tilt it down a bit, maybe. To sort of bring the apoapsis to me. It's high enough as it is, anyway. Yeah, this time I don't think I'll coast to Apoapsis, I don't know. Because it's, I don't know if maybe there was a fuel settling issue there. I mean, it shouldn't be with the, red, uh, the, the what you call separation motors. Okay, I'll go for separation. And ignition. Looks like it's lit. Yep, looks like we're on our way. It's all in the hands of test flight now, as far as I can figure it. Lots of G-forces. Whoa, and that's orbit. Whoa, whoa, camera. Alright. We have made orbit. So, first artificial satellite, confirmed. And while well, the vessel is complete, we don't get a speed record for 8,000 meters per second. That's sad. Okay, well, we got 8,000 meters per second. 
Uh, I think we covered all the biomes we're likely to hit. We got tropics, we got deserts. Um, I don't know if we can get forests or rainforests. Uh, we could probably hit mountains. There we go. Transmit. Transmit. Telemetry. Oh, we're back over grasslands. I missed the telemetry on the mountains. Okay. Well, I think that's that's about it. We have made orbit. It took a lot of uh, tries, but we finally made orbit. Uh, next time, we're going to make a launcher that is a little bit more reliable. I don't know when we're going to get to Boomer again. I do want to try it, but uh, I also want to make a reliable launcher for orbit. And I think that's the main goal of the next episode. All right. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.